Welcome to Supply Chain Now, the voice of global supply chain. Supply Chain Now focuses on the best in the business for our worldwide audience, the people, the technologies, the best practices, and today's critical issues, the challenges and opportunities. Stay tuned to hear from those making global business happen right here on Supply Chain Now. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Scott Luton and Jenny Froome here with you on Supply Chain Now. Welcome to today's episode. Jenny, how you doing? Doing really well, Scott. We've got beautiful sunshine and I'm here at a golf day, the Safex Golf Day, which is very exciting. First one in three years. Man, I am so jealous that I can't share with you my terrible golf game uh, today. Maybe next year. But hey, you know, uh, beautiful day where you are. We've got a beautiful panel here full of perspective uh, that I can't wait to dive into. Uh, so big thanks for your facilitation as always. Uh, great guest. So, and we're c- continuing our long running series now, uh, Supply Chain Leadership Across Africa, that of course we coordinate and collaborate with you and this Apex team on. So always a pleasure to knock out conversations like this with you. Always so much fun and such a privilege to be able to shine the light on some of the great people working on this continent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, some two people out there across the billions may not know, just two, that you serve, uh, Jenny, as COO of SAPIX, which, again, is doing wonderful work from a professional standpoint, professional development standpoint, rather, and networking, programming, events, you name it, golf tourneys, I'm going to add to that, <laughs> uh, across Africa. And you can check, uh, you can learn a lot more about SAPIX at sapix.org, S-A-P-I-C-S.org. Okay, so Jenny, uh, are you ready? I'm going to introduce each of our panels, uh, panelists here today. I'm you ready? More- very ready. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. I'm excited too. Uh, so with that said, I want to welcome in Cola Fellow Mabila, a data analyst with the People Shop. Cola Fellow, how you doing? I'm fine. Thanks. And how are you, Scott? I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing wonderful. Great to have you here with us. Uh, you're joined by Zaytu Delamini, uh, Duty Manager Administration with Worldwide Flight Services. Zaytu, how you doing? I'm super good, Scott. How are you doing? I am doing wonderful, and I can't wait. I got to figure out how to be super good, Jenny. I tell you, uh, <laughs> that means a, a 10 plus day, right? Uh, but great to have yes, you here. Absolutely. What's that, Zaytou? But I'm saying absolutely. It's always great to have a super day. <laughs> you are so right. Um, and finally, we're joined by Lubinda Lubinda, a pharmacy student at Eden University. Lubinda, how you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. Thanks, Scotty. And how are you? I'm uh, doing great. I was hoping you were going to say super good, Lubinda. <laughs> uh, you already mentioned it's super good. <laughs> All right. Well, good, good, good. Well, hey, welcome to each of you. Uh, I'm really looking forward to learning from, from you and, and uh, hearing your perspective. But Jenny, first question goes to you here today. Um, I really appreciate your facilitation, all these and, and all the great work you do, uh, passion, fueled leadership. But, you know, we our Supply Chain Now team was really excited to be able to contribute on some level to the Young Professional and Student Conference that the SAPIX team hosted a couple of months ago now. Um, and I'm a big fan of engaging these folks that we can learn so much from, right, that, are, that bring so many new ideas and, and capabilities into our profession. So how did that conference go? I think it was fantastic. You know, it's always, I say to people, it's the, sometimes it's the shot in the arm that, that I need. You know, it's easy to get bogged down with admin and all the boring stuff. And then along comes the Young Professional Conference. And I'm constantly reminded of the amazing, the amazing future that the profession has got. And I was just reading an article about how we're hemorrhaging, apparently, um, supply chain skills at a junior level. Um, and I look and I think I just, in a way, I hope that that paves the way for these amazing young people to forge stronger careers as a result of it. Because there, there really are a lot of awfully good young professionals coming through the ranks. So true. Uh, you and I big kindred spirits in that regard. And, and gosh, the industry's got to continue to do a better and better job of engaging and, and hearing uh, their ideas and hearing their questions, probably most importantly, why? Love questions yeah. that start with why, right? 
But yeah. you um, talk to us, you know, you've rubbed elbows with all of our panelists in different ways. Tell us more about that. So the so with the online conference, and I just want to say um, Lubinda's in Zambia and the three, the other three of us are in South Africa and there you are in Atlanta. Um, and this is what I think we've all realized that we're so lucky that COVID taught us about the online capability. And I think now we've got the privilege of being able to be back in person. It's also really cool to be able to connect virtually at other times. And I was in Zambia two weeks ago, which is where I met Lubinda. Um, and I wouldn't have been able to do that over the last two years. But now to be able to introduce him to you, to Colofello and to Zetu, Zetu um, virtually, it's just really amazing. And that's what I found incredible about the Young Professional Conference was that we were able to break down the barriers of travel, of expense, because young professionals can't get often funding to be able to go to an event like this. Um, and so for me, it was super special to be able to provide an online event with networking capabilities. Um, and it's really, you know, thanks to organizations like yours that we're able to do this. Um, and I hope that, you know, one day we'll get loads of people with loads of money giving us <laughs> lots of opportunities. Um, but it, it is. And I think it's, you know, it's that, what, what is it? It's from little acorns, big trees grow. And every little effort all of us can make to nurture and encourage one young professional to, to, to make a difference and to grow, I think it's, um, we'll, we'll have a stronger profession at the end of the day. Oh, um, 100%. Uh, completely agree. And, and, you know, you and I both have these conversations and build this platform because there's so much goodness in these conversations and ideas and, and passion. Some of the smiles we've seen, they could light city blocks. So I, I can't wait to learn all of our, learn more about our panelists. Uh, and thanks for that, um, those comments on the front end. So, uh, all right. So panelists, we're going to get to know both, all of y'all a little bit better with kind of a fun warm up question before we move into, uh, you know, learning about um, some of what y'all doing out in the industry. So I want to start with Cola Fellow. So who is a, you know, we love talking leadership around here, especially real deeds, not words leadership. So who is a role model in your eyes and why? Thanks, Scott. Uh, so for me, uh, in my eyes, leadership, uh, leadership uh, is, is, I would say a leader is somebody who leads by example, first of all, somebody who lives their truth, you know. And so for me, on my side, I would say one of my leaders uh, was my uncle, who actually passed away uh, mm. last year. And he had a typical uh, disadvantaged background, I would say, grew up in a poor household, but managed to gain some success and even started his own uh, business, uh, based, uh, training youth in the township, uh, trade skills like welding and boiler making and such. But that's not the reason why he's my role model. The reason that he's my role model is because uh, he was a genuine lifelong learner. You know, I remember uh, me and my mom visited him just before he passed and he had this a room with walls filled with all these qualifications. And even still in retirement, he was still going strong, pushing learning, you know. And so I asked him, like, why would you continue? I mean, you're in retirement, you should be sitting on your armchair, you know, smoking your pipe, <laughs> watching the grandkids play around. And he said it in, in our language, but I'll try and translate. So he was like, you know, like the mind is like a flame that you always have to keep feeding or otherwise it dies out so and if mm -hmm. the mind dies out everything else just goes out the window so he was somebody who lived his truth he wasn't doing it because he wanted a bigger salary or a promotion he just continued learning because that's who he was you know he was a lifelong learner so i would say that's my role model cola fellow man what a wonderful place to start with this conversation Okay, Zetu and Labinda, y'all have your work cut out for you, right? That's what a great answer. And I'm going to steal that. Uh, I'm paraphrase it. But the mind is like a flame. You got to keep feeding it. Uh, wonderful answer. Okay. So Zetu, along those lines, and, and uh, by the way, Colafello, your uncle's name, wh who, what was your uncle's name? Uh, he was Bob, Bob Masinga. Okay. Well, rest in peace, uh, Uncle Bob. So thank you for sharing that. Okay. So Labinda, 
You know, we love talking food here at Supply Chain House, one of Jenny and my favorite things to talk about. So what's what's one of your favorite things to eat? All right. So I have a long list, but talk about my Don't favorite thing to take. It's... <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. I won't. Um, I, I, I love to take mac and cheese with fried chicken alongside there has to be some uh, lemon squash. That's what I'd love to take. And I, I, I take that quite often. Lemon mm. squash, mac and cheese, and some fried chicken. You get me on my tummy all the time. Man, you're talking my language, Lubinda. I can eat fried chicken every day <laughs> if my uh, my dear wife, Amanda, would let me. Uh, and I love marrying, to your point, lemon squash. Uh I like that. I like lemon zucchini. You know, squash and zucchini are so closely related, and I love that um, that citrus flavor with uh, onions and and either zucchini or squash. So, hey, let's go meet after today's conversation. Let's go have lunch. How about that, Lubinda? Yeah. <laughs> um, now, some folks may not know. So, on the front end, as, as Jenny mentioned, don't say goat. Uh, if you weren't with us to pre-show, like our listeners aren't, um, Lubinda, you've got a goat just within arm. Well, maybe just outside the window or something. And he or she was looking to contribute to our conversation. So that's where Jenny's comment, don't say goat, uh, comes from. Um, okay. So Jenny, your quick comment uh, on what uh, Colafello or Lubinda has shared here already. Yeah, I, I love Colafello's contribution to, to that, both of them. I mean, mac and cheese, who can't do that? And fried chicken, fantastic. Um, I think that uh, the lifelong learning um, aspect is something that we all forget about and you're never too old to learn. So that I really took, took that away with me. So thank you for that, chaps. Really good contribution. Agreed, agreed. Okay, so Colafello and Lubinda, uh, thank you for sharing your your responses, giving us a little insight into who you are and some of your, uh, you know, some of your personality there. All right, so big thanks, uh, Colafello and Lubinda, for your answers there. Uh, we'll have to bring y'all back and talk a lot more food. And uh, as Colafello talked about that value from his uncle of always learning, no matter where you are in life. I love that. Um, so Jenny. We unfortunately have lost one of our pan panelists, and this happens in this you know remote world of technology these days. But we believe we lost Zetu due to some of the load shedding that's taking place where she lives. And and Jenny, I think some of our listening audience, much like I was not too long ago, aren't familiar with with what that is, what that means, and its impact, especially as it relates to you know bridging the technology gap. Can you share a little um, insights around that? Yeah, it's um, so load shedding technically is rolling power outages. Um, and basically in South Africa, we don't have enough electricity to cope with demand. We've also got, unfortunately, infrastructure that hasn't been maintained well. So it collapses every now and again. And so they're having to ration power and that they're doing that. And it's actually really well organized, which is kind of, it's like I feel a bit hypocritical saying that, but they, um, so they, the power is cut for two and a half hour periods, depending on what, what level we're on. At the moment, we're on level four, which means that we have three two and a half hour outages per day. So that's seven and a half hours without electricity in various different, um, different time zones. And it's having a huge impact, as you can imagine, on manufacturing, on retail, um, diesel, because people are having to buy more diesel to power generators. Uh, it's, it's getting a bit out, not out of control. We're all managing and we're all managing with a good sense of humor. But it's opportunities like this that if you don't have a generator, if you don't have a, a, an, an, a UPS system, you can't keep on line with the internet and right. it's made us all realize just how um, it really, the internet really is our, it's our lifeblood. It's what connects us all. Mm. And you can't, you can't do stuff without it often. So it's been a, it's a, it's a real eye opener. We've all become much better organized. I mean, you'll see, she tried to, to get herself somewhere where there was electricity. Obviously right. it's been cut again. So, yeah, it's one of those things. Well, 
What? Uh, thank you for sharing that. I, I, you know, again, I think that's in the blind spot for many many of our listeners, no matter where they are, and it, it's certainly an obstacle uh, to taking advantage of a wide variety of growth opportunities and and uh, ventures and it, just you name it. So, hopefully, it's something we can continue to to address as a global um, uh, society uh, in the years ahead. Um, and you mentioned UPS. So some of our listeners may not know the acronym un, un, uninterruptible uninterrupted power, power supply. supply, right? So not the company. Right. Uninterrupted power <laughs> supply. Okay. So we're going to continue on. We'll have Zaytu back. I, I look forward to having her back on a, a future episode. She's got so much to share, much like uh, our other two guests here. So Jenny, with that said, let's dive into our next question with Cola Fellow. Yeah. So, Colin Fellow, what made you choose supply chain management as a career? Thanks, Jenny. Uh, so, uh, before I begin, you know, it makes me think about this quote uh, by Jordan Peterson, where he says, uh, Finding work that you love uh, is a luxury, but finding work that you find meaningful is an imperative. I'm paraphrasing. So for me, uh, while I cannot say that I'm head over heels yet with supply chain and logistics because I'm still starting out, but for me, I view it as a career path that's meaningful. I mean, if you think about it, supply chain and logistics is the lifeblood of any economy. You know, you cut that circulation, everything just falls apart. So for me, I'm still... We're still dating, if you, if I can say that, you know. <laughs> so we still get it to know each other, you know. So yeah, I'm I'm, tell, I'm hoping that it'll be a career path that I learn to love. But for now, I see it as something that's meaningful and that could be fulfilling. So that's why I chose this career path. That's brilliant, and obviously, data is the hot topic at the moment, isn't it? And it's that, it's that data analytics. So you can have all the data in the world, but if you don't do anything with it, so it's people like you who, who are doing the stuff with it. Yeah, yeah. So true. That's definitely true. And I and I feel like I'm fortunate uh, because uh, right now, uh, like how I met my actual, how I got into my actual job was actually through Suffix. Uh, Wow, uh, the the lady who's my boss right now actually did a, a webinar for us for our young professionals, uh, a webinar that webinar series, if I may say so. So, uh, right now I would say that I might not be where exactly I want to be because I'm not necessarily in logistics and supply chain. Like the People Shop is a recruitment agency that specializes in recruitment for supply chain and uh, logistics professionals. So we do executive coaching. But the fact that I'm actually gaining and building those data analytics skills. So for when I actually do, when the opportunity does arises, I, I, I see it as a blessing. You know, it reminds me of that saying that, you know, you may not get what you want, but you may get what you need, you know. So, right. Yeah. And, and you know, as, as we all know, um, people are the one of the most valuable parts of global supply chains. And and for you and that experience you're gaining right now, kind of seeing the people side of global supply chain, what a great blessing. And it may yeah. it may uncover a eureka moment for you to say, hey, okay, gosh, that's exactly what I want to do, right? So I appreciate your perspective there, uh, Cola Fellow. And of course, and we'll dive in a little deeper to um, maybe the role SAPIX played in your continued journey. Um, okay. Jenny, uh, I'm going to talk to Labinda. I think, you know, um, some of what some of our shows we've done together have really focused on, you know, medical supplies, um, not just in Africa, but but everywhere. All right. Because because uh, as a famous guest once once said, uh, no pro, uh, uh, no, no, no product. No product, no program. Yes. Thank you, Jenny. No product, no program, no supply chain. Nothing happens. That you know, that the critical aid doesn't reach uh, where the people that that need it the most, right, or need it need it at all. So, Labinda, I love that you are starting, you're studying rather to be a pharmacist. So, are you able to tie back in you know, how critical that supply chain management competence and skills, and why they're so valuable and imperative, kind of in the pharmacy world and and in that pharmacist role. Yes, um, to begin with, I would say uh, about supply chain, two weeks ago, I, I had barely little knowledge or nothing, but I was privileged to, to attend um, a meeting, or should I say a conference, that's the PTD, people that deliver conference, 
that's where I actually met Jenny. Yes. So now I can come because I, I had a chance to, to, to talk to a lot of professionals in supply chain and management. And now I know that for a pharmacist, it's, it's not just the drugs that you get and you're just there, you say you have the drugs. It's also about where they're coming from. This quality check. If, if you look at supply chain, the whole, the whole logistic system about supply chain is control check, quality check. And so all those skills that we can apply, they're very important um, in, in, in the pharmacy faculty because we don't want to deliver drugs to people that are not of good quality. Mm-hmm. So we want to do some quality check. And so it's important for us to, to have those uh, skills because we'd want to know where is the drug coming from and how is it going to be distributed. And if you're going to distribute a drug, you have to understand um, which place are you distributing your drugs to. There's something you'd call uh, disease, uh, disease burden. So you do all those research work and all those things are embedded in supply chain. So I think for me, it's, it's a great opportunity and chance that I was given to, to learn about this. And I would want to, to further my studies, even after pharmacy, to, to venture in supply chain. I think it's a, a great thing for me. Yeah. Wonderful. I love that. You know, you're talking a lot about uh, provenance. Uh, you know, how can we have confidence in all the products that we use, but certainly the things we put in our bodies, right? Um, Jenny, I was reading in the Wall Street Journal uh, over the last few days about, you know, the country of India is, I believe, the world's second largest drug manufacturing market. And they've had, unfortunately, uh, especially I think related to like children's cough medicine, they've had some some big quality issues that speak to what you're talking about, uh, Lubinda. It's so critical, right? And, I, and we're not pointing fingers. Every industry has its challenges, but especially with medicine, it, very some very unique challenges there. Jenny, your comments. Yeah, I think it was the same when I went to Benin. I went to a, um, a, 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 the university there and there was a young lady doing a presentation about counterfeit drugs and the whole route because Benin was being used as an as a outlet to the country because it's right on the coast. Um, and just that, that realization of how important the role of the pharmacist is but in, in keeping us all safe but also just how important it is that they are given the right skills to understand the whole science behind supply chain management. So it's a, it's a, it, it was, it's a, we had a terrific team in Zambia of students from Eden University, and it's, we'll talk about Dr. Matoi later, but one of his real passions is that these young pharmacists are educated in supply chain skills. Mm. Um, so, Labinda, you've got a great journey ahead of you. Agreed. Man, uh, there's, I'll tell you, uh, Colafello and Labinda are light years ahead of where I was uh, at their point, at my point, you know, at their age. So, I love this. Um, okay. So, Jenny, I, I think, you know, Cola Fellow mentioned earlier uh, the SAPIX organization and, and uh, some of its impact on his journey. I think we want to kind of dive in a little bit more there with him, right? Yeah. So, so Cola Fellow is someone to whom I owe a big thank you. Um, he, he was <laughs> dragged kicking and screaming into a role that initially he didn't feel very comfortable in. And I hope you don't mind me sharing this, Colo, because I think we know well enough that you've grown into it with such great ease. Um, and he's been the chairman of the SAPIX Young Professional Committee for two years now, I think, or maybe even three with COVID, I sort of forget. Um, and it's, it, it's just amazing to see the participation, the leadership in a quiet, controlled manner um, and, and the little team that's growing and the community that's growing. So it's fantastic. And the fact that you ended up working, that Corfello ended up working with an organization with whom SAPEX has been aligned for a very long time. And Chantelle Cading is, is one of those people who will drop everything to come and help or speak or mentor or whatever at, at SAPEX. So it's almost like, you know, future generation, current generation of favorite people are getting together um, to, make, to make something great, even if it's just a foundational phase. 
But um, I, we know that your safe experience, um, Kole, has really sort of, you know, helped. But do you want to give people an, an indication of just what being part of the community has, has meant to you? Thanks, Jenny. So for me, uh, maybe I should start off with why I actually joined SAPEX, right? So uh, how I got into supply chain was actually uh, through my previous job. So I worked for a car rental agency. And the nice thing about it is that they always encouraged employees to learn as much as possible about the business. So even if you are just an uneducated sales agent and you were curious about what the guys in fleet management were doing so you could go there hang out with them find out uh, how does their work impact yours how your work impacts theirs so for me i always loved the space it was it was always a fast dynamic a high pressure environment so one day i asked one of the analysts working there like if i wanted to pursue this career path you know and do what you do what would i need you know and she said i would need like three things to start off First of all, an education that goes without saying. Secondly, she said I would need the right type of mindset uh, because 90% of the job is problem solving. So you have to be a problem solver. And thirdly, she said that I would need a good mentor to bring it all together. So education, problem solving acumen, and to, to perform beyond what is expected of me. And so that's one of the reasons I actually joined SAPEX, the mentoring part, you know, as a student, uh, the biggest challenges uh, that, that I believe that we face is actually building a professional network because as a student, all you know are just other students, you know, and it reminds me of that saying that your network is your net worth, you know. And so I joined Suffix in 2020 and it was kind of like a silver lining because because of COVID, we started having a lot of webinars, right? And that's where I knew I was in the right place because I was hearing from supply chain professionals all over the world while the pandemic was full, was unfolding, right? Talking about the experiences that they were having, the tough decisions that they had to make, and more importantly, the skills that would become a prerequisite for anyone going forward in this industry. So for me, that has been the most powerful experience, you know, to be a student and to be in that webinar with all these guys, seasoned, seasoned, seasoned professionals, you know, being able to actually ask them questions after their presentation. Mm. So for me, that's what SAPEX is about. It's about building that community, that network of professionals. And as I mentioned earlier, the reason that I actually do have my job right now is through SAPEX because that's how I actually met my boss. So it's, 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 it's self-evident, you know, that communities like these are important and can play an important role in students' lives. And so just in closing, the best way I could put it, it's like being able, it's like being for, from a student's perspective, it's like being in the industry before even entering it by just being around these professionals. So for me, that's what Suffix is. Man, okay. Uh, fellow, you bringing it here today. I, I love that. And, and a lot of what you shared there, you know, that's been my experiences yeah. with SAPIX going back years now, Jenny. So I love the role that y'all play, the, the um, outcomes driven, the purpose driven uh, programming um, and all that you offer. So thank you for sharing a lot of that, uh, Cola Fellow. All right, Lubinda, I want to go back uh, to what you're talking about. You, you know, you're studying to be a pharmacist in what's got to be a very complex trade and complex industry. Um, you're kind of speaking to that a second ago about Providence as we were, we were chatting. But what what made you want to be a pharmacist, Lubinda? Okay, thank you for the question. And to begin with, I, I'm going to say this. Um, I looked at all the professionals. There's medicine, there's uh, pharmacy, there's nursing, and one here could also do clinical medicine. And then after looking at that, because I personally, uh, I'm one person that does uh, a little form of business, like around campus, I sell headphones, earphones, and everything. So I looked at something that could give me a privilege. If I joined, I could continue to venture in with, uh, with the same direction of doing business. And pharmacy came with the right uh, atmosphere, came with the right conditions, the right place for me to, to 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 continue with doing business, and there's 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 a lot I could do, and one 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 more thing I can say is I was I was ready because I did the background check, so I was ready of what I was going to find the the math, the sciences. 
I mean, it has been kind of my been my thing the whole time. But the actual thing that moved me was the after school stuff. The, the, what I the subjects, the math, the sciences, farmers practice, pharmacology. I'm okay with that. But after my school, what am I going to find? What do I want to do? That's what I was looking at. And okay. in, in, in pharmacy, right now, I were looking at um, like supply chain. This is an amazing thing for me. And I want to go on with this and see where it's going to take me. I don't have more of the ideas, but with a continuous, um, a continuous way in which I continue participating in some of these things, conferences and meeting professionals like you, I think... I'm in the right place and I'll continue venturing in this. So that's what actually motivated me to be a pharmacist, the afterlife. Okay. So I heard a couple of things there, Jenny. Uh, I heard number one, clearly Lubinda is talented in the science and math area, unlike some of us <laughs> that struggled in those areas. So that was a good fit. I heard impact, you know, Lubinda wanted to make an impact. And as we all do, we want higher ability. We want to be able to train in something that they, we, can, we can go out and make our mark and make a living. So all of those things and, and more were reasons why he chose the uh, pharmacy profession. So we look forward to seeing you matriculate through the program, especially with your appreciation for all things supply chain. So, Jenny, I know you, you had a question about mentorship for Labenda, right? Yeah, and I think it's something Colofello also, because he's been involved with SAPEX from the beginning of our mentorship program. Um, but, you know, with Labenda, I've seen and I know um, the, the role that the that Dr. Matoi plays in the pharmacy, uh, in the pharmacist um, at, at University of Eden. And, and the desire for the students to do more, to learn more, to be more, and to experience more. And I think that, you know, for, for, for both Labinda and Colofello, it's it's been really obvious that mentorship, it obvious to me, is that mentorship has really enhanced their journey thus far. And I just wanted to find out from Labinda if that really was the case or if I'm looking at the wrong picture. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be direct at this and Dr. Matoi is just the right person we, we have. He's the right man and he's doing a great job because I'll tell you, he's supporting us in a lot of things. Let's say exposing us to the farmers world out there because he's one person who believes in uh, after school, after all the school stuff, what you find out there in, uh, in the world is the, the practice could be a bit different. So as a man who is uh, who has all the experience out there, he's always there to train us, to show, to show us the right path. And he's someone you, we, uh, we all want to, to continue showing us the right path because he's exposed. And his exposure does not end with him. He brings it out forward to, to us so that we can have the same experience and be ready for the world out there. He mm -hmm. would help us each time you have a win at something. He makes sure he... He helps you support that and he makes sure he helps you cheer up. If you have your down moments, you, he always ensures you, you're just having the best moments. And for him, it's not just about school because he would want you to, to, to enjoy. Tomorrow, we're going to be having sports day here at, at, at pharmacy. Something he, has, uh, something he has approved because he's our dean. And that tells you that as a mentor, you're not just so focused on whatever the person is doing, but you want to be not the best of, of, of the person, health-wise, uh, educative, and everything. And Dr. Matoi is there doing all that for us, and we really appreciate and enjoy his company. I love that about Dr. Matoi, and, and please give him our regards because I love, as you described it, Lubinda, it's far beyond just the grades that, that uh, he's helping y'all uh, attain. It's, it's your life. It's the whole journey. It's the holistic approach to making sure that, uh, that you're getting the most out of uh, this journey. Jenny, I think we were going to pose, get uh, Cola Fellow's uh, thoughts about mentorship as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'll be interested to hear. And one of the things, you know, is that mentorship doesn't have to be from 
the people who are in the same career as you, because I know that, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but Claire has definitely given you a lot of mentorship and guidance in your role as, as chairperson of, of SAPIC. So it's also, it's the informal mentoring as well as the formal mentoring. Do you want to comment on that? Yes, so true. I completely agree with that. So on on my side, I can also add on that and say that uh, even though you don't have, uh, let's say, a, a, a close relationship with someone, but they can also be mentoring you in a way. Because as I said, you know, when we when we would have those webinars at Sapex, right, and uh, and I would and I would attend them, you know, I would take notes and 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 listen, you know, and use what I learn from these speakers, from these guest speakers and professionals to map out my own career path, start starting to think about where I want to go. You know, I never even imagined uh, moving into data analytics with like a focus on supply chain. And it, it's all because of Suffix. It's all because of mm. Suffix where I am. So <laughs> mentorship does not necessarily have to be somebody who's just, uh, it, 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 it can be, it, it can just be as simple as a webinar. You know, because as they share their experiences, you learn from that and you take what you can take and you apply it to yourself. So, yeah, I can definitely say that. Yeah, it's been really a great experience. Yeah. And reverse. I promise mentoring. I'm not paying him. So. <laughs> no, <laughs> we know uh, and our audience knows uh, Sapix and Jenny Froome and and all the great work y'all put into and invest in a lot of the experiences that, that uh, uh, Cola Fellow has just been sharing. Um, one last thing about mentoring. You know, Jenny, you and I have chatted about this on, on shows and, and sidebar conversations, you name it. Revor, uh, reverse mentoring is so valuable, yeah. right? As we're sitting here learning from Lou Benda and Cola Fellow here today, frankly, yeah. I've got my yeah. couple pages of notes from things that they're sharing. You know, it, it's not, it's got to be a two way street. I think the most successful mentorship relationships are good two way streets. Okay. So, what we want to do, uh, I hate to wind a conversation down. Y'all bring so much to the table, and I really appreciate your, your uh, pos- both of your, your positive mindsets. You're a lot like Jenny in that in this regard. Um, so how can folks, let's make sure folks know how to connect with you both. Lubinda, how can folks connect with you and network with you? Okay, I, I think for me the most easiest uh, form which people can connect with me uh, is through LinkedIn and my account there is Lubinda Lubinda, my, my names. But I think I can also, I think it's okay if I could also share my contact on WhatsApp. It's the easiest, the most easiest way because I'm always online and I think it's the easiest. So I'll just share my contact. I can just, I think, is it okay if I can just share it, share it out? Sure. You'll be the first, Lubinda, you'll be the first person in approximately 1,050 shows that have shared their WhatsApp here. So if you're comfortable, I'm comfortable. Ah, okay, sure. So it's plus plus because I'll give the code name for them therefore. That's plus two sixty, then nine seven nine eighty four sixty thirteen. So I think that's the easiest form of connecting with me. Love that. And hey, uh Jenny has taught me. I'm learning some new technologies like WhatsApp. So thank you so much, Lubinda. <laughs> A miracle. I've never taught anyone anything technological in my life. So thank you, Scott. You bet. Um, okay, so Lubinda, thank you so much, and we look forward to getting an update on your journey to becoming a very successful pharmacist and making, you know, kicking your dent in our universe. Um, okay, Cola Fellow, I uh, really have enjoyed your perspective. Clearly, you're already giving back, uh, you know, in your new role as industry, but still giving back via SAPIX and some of your volunteer leadership activities there. I really admire that. How can folks connect with you as well? Uh, well, for me, it's LinkedIn. It's just my name and surname, Kulufelo Mabila, and I should pop up. I think Wonderful. I'm the first on LinkedIn, so my name we, is quite unique. <laughs> we know we're going to make it easy. We're going to include, based on um, the information we gather from y'all, we'll include that in episode notes so our listeners will be one click away from connecting and enjoying conversations with you. So thank you. so, Kulufelo, thank you so much for all that you're doing and your time here. Thank you. Amen. Okay, so Jenny, uh, before we fo- formally sign off, uh, two quick questions for you. Uh, first off, what was your favorite thing, at least one of them, that was shared here today? Technology challenges and all, you know, hey, you know, the the uh, meaningful things in life aren't ever easy. Um, and then secondly, well, let's make sure folks know how to connect with you and say pick. So on the first one, your best favorite thing here, one of them. 
But just being able to listen to these these two young men who are, you know, they are the future. And I just think the 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 wisdom and like you said, the reverse mentorship, that's that's what keeps us going, isn't it? It's learning from others, but understanding that we can learn from those younger than us as well as those older than us. So I think that's been a, a really, really great um, education for me today. So important. You know, we um we, one of our programs here, we've talked about it for Jenny, the now generation, you know, we're, we're, we're connecting with universities, especially those that really invest in their supply chain management programs. And one of my favorite questions to ask these professors of these, you know, these leaders of these programs is, hey, what are you learning from the students? And that their eyes just sparkle, much like uh, our guests here. I mean, with all that they learn from that two-way street. So, but Jenny, uh, if folks want to plug in the SAPIX program, if they want to support a lot of the great work that y'all do, professional development, education, some of the events that Cola Fellow um, and Lubenda was talking about uh, via y'all's partnership with folks like people that deliver great organization, how can folks connect with you? Yeah, easiest for me is, is LinkedIn, um, but otherwise um, via, say, it's very easy email address, jenny at sapix dot, what is it, dot org dot za. Um, but, you know, also via Scott, he'll know how to find me. You bet. And if you have any challenges, you reach out to us. We'll make sure it gets you connected. I will also have those links again in the episode notes. Uh, my heart is full. I love these conversations. I really do. I know we, we didn't, you know, an hour is tough to, and there's so much we didn't get to here today, but I really appreciate y'all's time uh, here today. So I want to thank again our uh, Distinguished guests, Colafello Mabila, a data analyst with the People Shop. Colafello, thank you so much for what you do. Yeah, thank, thank you, Scott. You. It was a pleasure. We'll have you back on soon. And then, of course, Lubinda Lubinda, a pharmacy student at Eden University, uh, that one that appreciates supply chain management that many uh, aren't, uh, don't. So, hey, you got a leg up already, Lubinda. Thank you for your time here today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for the opportunity to speak here. You bet. You bet. We'll check back in on, on you soon. Big thanks to Zetu Glamini. We'll have her back on a future episode, you know, um, as you know, Murphy's Law and technology is still is still in play and we'll overcome that challenge on a future episode. Jenny, Jenny Froome with Sapix, the one and only Jenny Froome. Hey, thanks for all that you do on these conversations. Uh, I know you get as much of a kick out of it and you're uh, community and, and audience as much as ours. It's always a pleasure and honor not um, uh, facilitating these conversations with you. Yeah, thank you so much again. You know, together everyone achieves more. That's hey. that's what I believe. That is, um, you, you, I bet you have a tattoo of that acronym. <laughs> Team <laughs> not together. Yet. I'm too scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, thank you everybody. Thank you, Jenny, uh, Cola Fellow. Uh, Lubinda, Zaytu. Uh, thanks to all of our listeners. I uh, really appreciate you know, y'all leaning into these conversations. Uh, and we want to get your feedback on that. But what folks, whatever you do, right? Whether it is SAPIX, whether it is organizations like People That Deliver, whether it's your own your own local nonprofits that enable these experiences that our guests spoke to today, hey, lean in and invest in them, right? Deeds, not words. Write those checks and spend that time. Uh, but whatever you do, uh, Scott Luton, on behalf of our entire Supply Chain Now team, challenged you to do good to give forward, and to be the change. And with that said, we'll see you next time right back here at Supply Chain Now. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being a part of our Supply Chain Now community. Check out all of our programming at supplychainnow.com and make sure you subscribe to Supply Chain Now anywhere you listen to podcasts. And follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next time on Supply Chain Now. Supply Chain Now.